There's a saying that I don't remember where I heard, but it's basically when people go into outer space, people being made of the earth, it is then the earth looking back at itself. Uh, however you feel about Jeremy, you cannot argue that when you, if you put on a really good set of headphones and listen to all the stuff that's going on there and how it intermingles and meshes, this is one of the crowning achievements of, of the world, so to speak. And that's what we're doing today. We're doing Jeremy. Finally, some of these requests went back two years or more, so I do apologize. And if you're still here, thank you for still being here. Uh, for, get comfortable, Connor O'Toole, Evan Adams, Rohan Ariel, Marcus Stroud, Matt Guitar, Georgia Is Okay, Rafael Nepomuceno, I've been practicing that <laughs> in the shower, Ruthie's all, what is he doing? Rafael Nepomuceno, Simone Ramosti, Nehemias Cisterna, Daniel, Daniel Postigo Zapata, Harrison Galterio, Bruno, Savio Lopez, Naomi Ferreira Sola, Danny Dravix, Sadie Stuff, Joey Rektorovic, Yoni Yampolsky, and Shooter BC9. Shooter, it's been so long since I've said your name. Let's get pumped. I'll be right back. One of the challenges with this song is there are just so many guitar parts. And then there's the bass part, too. I don't really want to do a Mike's part and a Stone's part video. I want to kind of show you everything that I hear. And uh, then you can kind of pick which ones you want to play it for your own enjoyment. Because that's sort of the point uh, along those lines. Let's start with the bass riff. Because if you're playing it a lot, you're not just going to wait for the guitars to come in. So here we go. Open A. 5-7 hammer on. Open A again. And then you've got one of the guitars doing, I think it's Stone, doing the low harmonic. So 12th fret on the D string and the G string harmonic. Right? And then Mike does 5th fret on the same strings, which is an octave or two higher. And then Jeff goes again, and the harmonics go in reverse. No, they don't go in reverse. They go D string, A string. And for Mike, he does it on the 7th fret, G string, D string. And then Jeff goes. And then they go, but this time they go. to do all three of those if you're going to do the riff and the harmonics. But on this one it would be uh, D5, G5, followed by D7. So, third time. verse. Was that clear? Okay, good. Be right back. I mean, I might as well do the, the demonstration. That part's just, it's the most succinct part in the song. So here we go. Okay, here comes the verse. A 12 string bass, by the way, he'd play it regular. There's just three strings. Like a 12 string guitar has double strings. You don't play it any different. It just sounds thicker and shimmery. Same idea. He's got three strings in each of the string spots and four times three is 12. So that's what gives it that really big chunky sound that you can't quite identify. It's a 12 string bass. Also in Why Go, I believe. Okay, here's the, the verse, the calm before the storm. We're gonna start with the bass riff, right, but on the guitar, because the guitar does it, and it's gonna be... And then that's it. If you wanna get fancy, that's a G root there, right? A D string, fifth fret is a G. Here's a G, and that's where octaves are located. Two strings higher, uh, two frets higher, two strings down. You could play a major third on the fourth fret of the G string, and then it'd be... To get fancy there. Uh, I saw some live versions where that happened. The other challenge with the song is they play it different 
every single time, including times close together in the early 90s when the song was first written. So we just, we get to choose our favorite parts. That's awesome. Okay, first part. Then. And from that top note, rather than go down, you, you turn it into an F-shaped A. So F, F-sharp G, G-sharp A in F shape, and just give it a strum. So, first part. And that's it for the verse. Give it a G there. Awesome, here comes the chorus. I guess we should call this the pre-chorus, the daddy part. All right, so we start with the riff. But then we're gonna play power chords, but not like you usually think of power chords. Usually power chords are on the E and the A strings, or the A and the D strings. Now we're gonna play it on the D string, seventh fret, and the G string, ninth fret. That's a power chord, because it's a root and a fifth from the scale of whatever it is. That's what power chords are. Um, but they're higher than we usually do it. And this is gonna be, so if octaves are two frets higher, two strings down, to find out what this is, it's boop boop. Boop boop. It's an A power chord. So we're gonna go. And then notice which fingers I'm using. We're gonna drop our pointer finger by one fret, and now you can involve your A string if you want. What the heck is that? That's an A note, and an F sharp note, and a D note. That's just a D chord, but this is certainly the strangest way I've ever played D. So here we go, first chunk of the daddy part. The second part, you can involve the open A string that whole time. It doesn't disagree with any of them. Can't tell what Pearl Jam does, but that's certainly an option. Or not. Either's good. The second time, instead of going from A to G, oh, by the way, listen to how different this sounds. Same chords, different octave, totally different song. Thank goodness for Pearl Jam's artistic sensibility. Okay. Second time, we go from G to A, at which point Stone chimes in with his, which you don't have time to do that's like the whole thing of it, and then get back to the next part. So you choose, but it's gonna be B12, hammer on pull off to 14, hammer on to G14, play E12, play B12, play G14. Clear as mud? Okay, good, be right back. All right, Stone's part for the chorus is really, really interesting, because what you're gonna do, really, really interesting in the way of like, how did Pearl Jam make a song out of this chord progression? I'm sure at no point they were thinking, and now here's the chord progression. But Stone's playing E12, B13, G14, and you're just gonna plant your fingers there and go. <laughs> That's an A minor, because check it out. This is this is the same, since 12 is the same as zero, as doing this, which is two of the three things you need to play in A minor, so. But up here. And then he goes into his. Which we already know, but that is a riff in A major. There's your second fret out of your A chord, right? So like, at its most basic level, the chord progression for the chorus is...
with Mike's part. All right, so Mike does some stuff, and I'm gonna show you the couple of ways I saw him do it on the various videos that I saw him do it, and then I'm gonna show you a way to incorporate sort of Jeff's bass line into it, uh, which makes it more neater. Okay, so we do our riff, of course, because that's how everything starts in this song. But then you're gonna play the D7, and then in the unplugged version, Mike went like this, but he played the D7 with his ring finger, like regular. And then he played this F note, on the 8th fret of the A string with his pinky. And then he kind of put his pointer finger on the 5th fret of the, the E string and went before he played an F shaped A. So that would be like this. Also, anytime you're playing this F shaped A, you can sus for it by putting your pinky finger on the G string 7th fret. I saw him end up down here for the A instead of the F shaped A, and then do this G string 4th fret. You can just wait there, because in the record that's what happens. Also, I saw him do it this way, go all the way up to the A string 12th fret, G string 14th fret, we're playing an octave chord now, so you want to mute everything other than the A and the G strings, and go from 12 to 8, and then there's our F octave, right, and you just hang out till your A. I find that to be very challenging to get from real fast. Another way to do that would be our the D the the A note on the D string that we've been playing, but octaves once you involve the B string are one fret higher. So you got D7, B10, and then down to 3, 6. The other thing you can add for your own enjoyment there, so yeah, let's see if that's any easier. Not much easier. It's hard. I'm personally going to go with this one. <laughs> and then wait. But you could do Jeff's A string. Five, seven, three, eight. acoustic guitar in this part. I'm going to see if I can figure it out. Don't move. All right, that acoustic that you can hear in the back, back, background of the mix does da, 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 A minor, F really quick, followed by D minor. Chord everyone always forgets. One, two, three, uh, followed by E minor. And it sounds to me like they just strum E minor twice there before going to our A major. Which makes me think we're going to have to do a Jeremy Campfire, right? That's going to be fun. Okay, uh, next part, be right back. All right, the second verse features some definite... In with your G there and on the A. You'll hear Mike mess around with his pinky finger on the on the E string 7th fret. You can do any of those for fun. 7th fret of the E string, B string, or G string makes it a, a something, a something, or a suspended 4. Okay, then we're in with the whatever the next part is. Be right back. Alright, so there's three chunks in the second chorus, and the first one is like the whole first chorus. However you decide to do it. But the second one is, which of course you could do as your octaves, which I told you I'm avoiding, 12th fret, 14th fret, just like we did the first time, or didn't do. But now instead of going down to 8, we're going down to 10. And hang out until you do your A. So first one of the second chord. Just 
just like regular. Hey. And then we're into the big, awesome outro. Also, I should say the acoustic guitar was obviously going for that bit. It was going its thing, right? Except that might make it a G because we went... I don't know, I couldn't tell. It also sounded like Jeff still played an F, but everyone else played a G, which was a weird sound to notice. But anyways, uh, the acoustic guitar went... And then on the A... Another good little tidbit for the campfire version, which of course we'll do some other time. Okay, into the big outro. Alright, so now we're into my favorite part, which is when the guitars do more like what the bass does in the verse, which is do the riff over and over again without stopping. So you start with the riff, of course, and then without stopping, then, uh, so a lot of people think it's open A twice, and then A5, 7, D5, so that would be like this. But I can't tell whether it's an ear trick, like with the toms, because they hit right exactly when those notes happen, uh, or if Jeff is doing the C note, which I'm about to show you, uh, or if I just want it to be this, because sometimes wanting something to be something is enough to make you hear it that way. But here's what I like to do, and it, I couldn't find any evidence for it or against it. Uh, I tried slowing it down. I slowed it down so much it got garbly, and I could equally no longer tell. But here's what I like to do, and it might be, so tell me if you want it to be this as well. And so I played the open A, and then hammered on with my pinky on the 8th fret of the E string, which is a trick I believe Pearl Jam utilized in Animal as well, uh, rather than go 5 to 8 on the E string, which is the same exact notes. 5, 8, 5, 7, 5. Uh, I just think it's snappier that way. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, but when you end up chugging into the from the blackboard part, right? You're there, and then they chug with their pointer fingers on the D string fifth fret. From the black! Which is where we're going now. Don't move. Okay, now it's getting to really small parts so I can maintain my focus. Okay, so. Just like we've been doing, uh, which also could be, of course, and then Mike goes A down here, the power chord down here, followed by B octave, so A2, G4, C octave, then back to A, B, C, and I think he stops before the D happens, but Jeff does the D, and why not, so that's like this. And while that's going on, Stone's doing his... And then it starts with the chorus bit, alternating like it did the second time, but it does this one first, which I guess totally makes sense it, uh, since we went the first time, but it had that whole extended thing in the middle which broke it up, so you could think of it as it then starts backwards with the chorus alternating. Followed by, followed by, and now I'll be right back. All right, there's a part right before the madness, madness, where you have to give it a chug when he's all Jeremy spoken, spoken, Jeremy spoken, spoken. You have to chug on the A for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then during the whole madness, there's lots of stuff going on. I was surprised to hear that Stone is literally just going like this the whole time except for when he's all making it staccato and Mike's messing around with many things including but not limited to this thing. But for your own jamming pleasure, since this song, this section is in A minor, look. It's kind of neat when you simplify it like that.
But it's the A minor scale, starting on A and everything. So let's do our octaves. Open, two, three, five, seven, eight, ten, twelve. And then continuing, twelve, fourteen, that sounds familiar. Uh, Fifteen, seventeen, nineteen, that's as far as I can go. But you can jam to your heart's extent on all those cool octave chords. For lots of madness there, and even though we're on guitars and not basses, I want to do Jeff's really cool bass outro next. Don't move. All right, this is awesome. Just like we did and set it off a couple of days ago with the roots and the major or minor thirds, that's the basis of this outro. So we're going to play open A string, then D14 and G12. That's a root and a minor third. We're playing an E minor. With just that much, then open A again, but we're going to be on D12 and G11. So it's either 1, 2, 3, A, boom, ba, ba, and then down to 9, 7, and then up to 10, 9, down to uh, 5, 4, up to 7, 5, back down, and that's it, he just does it twice, so, and then he repeats. Jeremy, oh my gosh, probably more than you ever wanted to know about that song, but that's everything I heard, so uh, yeah, let me know what you think about the... That's what I'm most, most interested in, in what you're hearing, because hearing's an illusion, and it's weird. And thank you for being here for that marathon. I haven't looked at the clock, but I think it's like 23 minutes. We did it. Jeremy is done. Now we gotta do the campfire version. See you next time with more stuff. Goodbye.